Within the .NET Framework's structured exception handling flow, we have to understand how exceptions get handled within the application, either when structured exception handling code exists or doesn't exist in the application. When an exception is generated, we refer to it as being thrown. So the .NET Framework will throw exceptions back to our code when it encounters one. We can intercept those exceptions and handle them. We can also rethrow those exceptions and pass them back up the stack if we decide that we don't want to handle them or maybe there's structured exception handling earlier on in the code. The framework first checks to see if the exception is caught in the routine in which it was generated, and it checks to see if there's a handling mechanism for it. And if so, then it relies on that exception handling code to deal with the error itself. If it doesn't find exception handling in that routine, it will pass that information up the call stack until it finds an exception handling routine, again, relies on that routine to deal with whatever exception occurred. If no exception handling routine exists, we've seen before, our application will crash, and that's not what we want to have happen. So we always want to handle exceptions in our code. In this example, what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate how the exception handling gets passed back up the call stack. In our main method, we have some exception handling functionality written here in the form of try-catch blocks, but we're not doing anything in the try-catch block with the exception of calling another function. That function exists here below our main method, and it's called divide. Here's where the functionality is that will generate the actual exception itself. And again, it's just the divide by zero. It's a simple exception that we can use to demonstrate this. Normally in your code, you would write your exception handling routine in this method. But again, to demonstrate passing it up the call stack, we haven't written it in here. We're instead going to rely on the exception flow mechanism to pass it back up the stack so that it gets handled in our main method. Let's just go ahead and execute this first to see the exception that gets generated. So control F5, we'll input a value here for the numerator, we'll put zero in for the denominator, and we'll get this attempted to divide by zero error. And if we press any key to continue and it closes it, we go back to our code and we can see that, you know, it wrote out the message here in the divide by zero catch routine. So this is what actually gets written out. That error message is a default .NET framework message for the divide by zero exception. Again, what happened was because we called the divide method and it didn't have its error handling routine down here, it passed it up the stack. So to get an idea of how that happens, let's drop a breakpoint here on our divide method. Let's go ahead and this time start with debugging, so the F5, so that we can actually see what happens as the code executes. We step into the divide routine. So the method says go ahead and call the divide routine. And as we use the F11 to step into it, we step into the divide routine, and then we'll have the console ask us to enter a number. And so that pops up, so we'll enter 65 and press enter. We come back to our code, and we continue executing one line at a time. It'll now prompt us to enter a denominator, so it wants to read the denominator value, so we'll enter 0 and press enter. And then it will attempt to do the division here on this particular line. So as we step into it, you'll notice now what happens is Visual Studio immediately pops us out of the divide function back up into our main method and has now caught the exception divide by zero. And again, if we hover our cursor over the divide by zero exception, you can see the class information. We can expand to get all of the bits and pieces of information that are part of that. But let's step into the code and see what happens. We're going to assign an error message. And in this case, you can see in our locals window, it's null. There is no value assigned to that yet. But we're going to get the message from our divide by zero exception. In this case, attempted to divide by zero gets put in. And then we would write that out to the console window. And as we execute this, because we were using F5, our console window has disappeared relatively quickly but you saw the output in the previous example. So you can see what has happened is that Visual Studio looked into the divide function. This is where the exception occurred. There was no error handling. There was no exception handler here. So it passed it back up the call stack to the main method, and it found an exception handler, and this is where the exception was handled. So again, .NET has a very specific manner in which it handles exceptions in code. When exceptions are generated, it looks in the method where the exception occurred for a handling routine. If not found, it passes up the call stack until it either finds an exception handling routine 
or the application crashes because one didn't exist. Don't let your application crash because you didn't anticipate exceptions.